All right, so this is pre-calculus section 1.3. We're going to be solving equations using a graphing utility. One of my favorite things, and actually a useful skill. I use, actually use this beyond math classes. Um, I used it to find my father-in-law's retirement schedule. Is good. Okay, don't write this down. We're just talking about it. An equation, one variable, is a statement in which two expressions, at least one containing the variable, are equal. It's our classic equation. So what we think of an equation is truly an equation in one variable. One variable means that there's only one x value versus an x and a y, or an x and a y and a z. Uh, the expressions are called sides of the equation, so I will refer to the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I mean using the equal sign to divvy it. Left is on the left and right hand is on the right. And we call them sides. Don't write any of this down. Don't write this down. Just talking about it. The admissible values of a variable, if any, that result in a true statement are called solution or roots of the equation. Once again, don't write this down. This is all stuff that we did in like junior high. So when you solve an equation, you get a solution. And when you plug that solution back into your original equation, it'll give you a true solution. All stuff we already know. To solve an equation means to find all the solutions of the equation. So examples of an equation in one variable. Don't write this down. X plus 5 equals 9. X squared plus 5X equals 2X minus 2. X squared minus 4 over X plus 1 equals 0. X squared plus 9 equals 5. So <clears throat> the, if you look at X plus 5 equals 9, this statement is true when X equals 4. So 4 is a solution of the equation, or we say that 4 satisfies the equation. It's like when you're hungry, after dinner, for ice cream, ice cream satisfies my hunger. Equation is hungry for its solution, and only the number that makes it a true statement is the solution or satisfies the equation. We write the solution set, we write the solution in set notation. This is called the solution set of the equation. Like x equals 4 is the solution set. An equation that is satisfied for every choice of the variable for which both sides are defined is called an identity. Um, I would like you guys to write down this one. An equation that is satisfied for every choice of the variable. So every number you plug in gives you a true statement for which both sides are defined is called an identity. So this sentence right here. So for an example, x plus 1 equals x plus 1 is an identity because it's the same on the left or the right. No matter what we plugged in for x, it would give us a true statement. All right, we're doing it now. Learning objective. Solving equations using a graph and utility. Easy process. <clears throat> so write this equation down. x to the third minus x plus 1 equals 0. We're going to round our answers to two decimal places. Please, when it says on a quiz or whatever, if it says to round, be diligent in rounding. So when we have an equation equal to 0, so one side of our equation is 0, um, it is the same as finding the x-intercepts of our non-zero side. So if we put in our graphing calculator and go ahead and do that right now, y equals x to the third minus x 
plus 1, let's find those intercepts. So go ahead and graph this on in your graphing utility, and I'm going to do it um, on Desmos. So y equals x to the third minus x plus 1. Is equation? Plus 1, okay. All right, so let's double check that. Minus x plus 1. All right, so x intercepts. So go ahead and draw this graph <laughs> on your paper. All right, so this graph has one x-intercept. Its x-intercept is at negative 1.325. And it looks like this. So go ahead and sketch this graph on your paper. There appears to be one x-intercept between negative one, or sorry, negative two and negative one. And there is. I agree. <clears throat> so you can use the zero or root feature of your graphing utility on my um, on Desmos. I just clicked it. Um, but if you use the zero or root feature on your graphing utility, you can actually find the exact value versus just guesstimating. And we get that x is equal to negative 1.32 rounded to two decimal places. And if you look, Desmos rounded it. Oh, that's interesting. So watch that a little bit. Do you guys see how Desmos rounded this to 1.325? And your calculator carries that out a little bit more. Because if it, it was 1.3247, then this would be negative 1.32. And if you go with Desmos, Desmos rounded this to 5. And that would be negative 1.33. So there's a little bit of a difference. It depends upon which utility you're using. This one is m more accurate. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to find the solutions to the equation 4x to the 4th minus 3 equals 2x plus 1. I'm going to round our answers then. Uh, to two decimal places. So I want you to go ahead and write this equation down in your notes. 4x to the 4th minus 3 equals 2x plus 1. If you get this process down, you will always be able to check your algebra on um, these chunky, difficult problems. So this is a skill that will serve you well. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to take the left-hand side of your equation and graph it on its own line and the right-hand side of the equation and graph it on its own line. So 4x to the 4th minus 3 and 2x plus 1. So go ahead and do that in your graphing calculator. Double check that I have it right. Four uh, x to the fourth minus three and two x plus one. Four x to the fourth minus three and two x plus one. Okay. So the solution to this equation is where our two lines cross. It's when these guys are equal to each other. So <clears throat> on your graphing calculator, you're going to use your 
intercept operation. And on Desmos, I'm just going to click it. So it's where these two intersect. And the, at the point of intersection of the graphs, the value of the y coordinates is the same. So the x coordinate at the point of intersection is a solution to the equation. So right here and right here. You can use intersect on your graphing utility to find the point of intersections of the graph. And in this case, we have two points of intersection, so we have to use the intersect twice. <clears throat> so in this case, the intersection is x equals negative 0.867 and comma negative 0.7349. And this one is about x equals 1.1 comma 3.23. And if you round those to the nearest two decimal places, here are those intersection points. So the it's in fact the x value that we care. So when we write this on our paper, we write the solutions are x equals negative 0.87 and x equals 1.12. The y values, yay, that's interesting, but we're asking for the solution to the equation and that is specific to the x's. All right, so to summarize, Steps for approximating solution using zero or roots. We write the equation as whatever equals zero and then graph the non-zero side of the equation. Or we let one side of the equation equal y1 and the other side of the equation equal y2 and find where they intersect. And that's how you use a graphing utility.